You won't believe how this boat, Endurance, ended up in a police station junkyard in the Bahamas. A year ago, this boat was abandoned off the west coast of Africa in the Canary Islands and it managed to catch an oceanic drift all the way across the Atlantic until the point where it shipwrecked just off the Bahamas. The police then seized the boat, took it onto their compound and that's exactly why we're here. We've spent the last four days getting it ocean ready again and today our plan is to lift it with a crane back into the ocean after filling it with supplies from the local supermarket and we're going to take you with us for every step of the journey today. And welcome to episode number two of the Endurance Rescue Mission. We're here on the tiny Eleuthera Island and things are coming along very very nicely. I arrived here late yesterday afternoon and so this morning we've got a hitchhiker ride to get around the island. We've not rented a car. Walking up the hill to start our morning commute. Hopefully we'll um, get a lift this time fairly shortly. <laughs> 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 Station. Are you going that way? Yes. Oh yes, thank you brother. Thank you so much. And then this morning we made our way out of the accommodation after a beautiful sunrise stroll and hitchhiked our way down to the police station. And the reason for that is the boat is at the police station and we've had to do all kinds of bureaucracy to try and get the boat signed off and ready to leave the island because it washed up here abandoned. And so the police have to make sure that it's gone to the rightful owner. Chris, the owner of the boat, flew out and he's just flown back actually the day that I arrived. Got all the paperwork in order and we're currently dealing with the police station and the port authority and it looks like we're getting a big green tick and everything's going to be good to go tomorrow morning. And what that means for me and you is it's now 1pm. I've just got to put pen to paper. They've taken our driving licenses and we need to sign to say we're taking the boat away and then we've got to get everything in order. So the boat is propped up in the, pre in the police scrapyard. We're organising the crane right now to get it into the ocean, into this beautiful blue water behind me and we need to get it stocked up from the local supermarket I'll show you everything that we're stocking up with food wise so we're gonna be eating around four to five thousand calories per day all being well and we'll be burning in excess of six seven thousand even more than that so we're gonna lose some weight uh, but try and replenish with uh, all of the tinned food there's some interesting stuff in that supermarket so I'll, I'll take you with us as we stock up but first of all I'm gonna join the boys back in the Port Authority office then we'll head down to the supermarket as we organize the crane and get the boat in the water I love it when a plan comes together. We've signed, we've all signed the affidavit. It's now been released into our possession by the Port Authority and the police force. It's such a pretty thing there. <laughs> Matches my eyes, no? I think it does. Oh, and the blush on your cheeks. Oh, you're not using red pen, are you? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Lads, how are we doing? Yeah, good, mate. Good, Very ready good. to go. Feeling pumped up now after they've had days of admin trying to sort that. But. Obviously no good news comes without bad news and we're not getting a crane. <laughs> what we've got to do is we've got to try and lift it by hand. We're given a, we've been given a fleet, hopefully, of burly men. That's what they call themselves, Jack, or? Yeah, burly men. The Bahamas' biggest lifters. <laughs> obviously I'm now the Bahamas' yeah, biggest yeah, lifter. Yeah. They'll be the Bahamas' fourth, fifth yeah, and sixth same. biggest lifters, obviously. And I'm going to talk you through the boat. So Brucey, absolute gent, got here a few days before uh, Jack and I and has done a lot of the legwork in getting that boat up and running and then finished things off before my pretty little hands didn't want to get dirty so uh, they did all the, all the hard work. How you doing? Hi. Yeah. Adam, doing the square root call, just filming me while I'm sweating like a something that sweats a lot. Yeah, I've just been standing here with my lovely hat on. I'm not, I didn't even touch the boat. Stressing, stressful, always lifting a boat, moving a boat. Captain Jack. No, with no, no crane, no uh, mechanical lifting advantage. Well, the winch counts, no? It's a bit I of mean, an advantage. I mean, okay. Totally. <laughs> but yeah, in the water now. In the water now. And yeah. then we're going to do food and, and water after yeah, that. It's so. going to be, it's, you know, it's not ideal, but we've got to in. We've got to uh, make a move. We've got to make a move with this. So it's, yeah, quarter past two now and uh, yeah, obviously we need to be ready to go by, by the evening. Is it 
rudder on? Yeah, it's also up. Right, so when this boat starts to flow, the wind's coming from that direction, so it's naturally going to want to go this way. Everyone happy? It's going to go like that. Yeah, alongside there. And then we're hopefully going to head straight out. Mission success, a little bit of a scrape on the way through, but managed to get it out without breaking the oar through that narrow channel. They're out there in the ocean now. I'm walking around to meet them and we're gonna get it moored up. Heading into the supermarket now to see how many gallons they have, because we need four T5 gallons of water, which works out at six liters a day for 10 days. We found the water cupboard. Um, so, what's the cheapest? Uh, Count them out first. Yeah, yeah perfect. Uh, okay, All right, $117 for 45 of these gallon bottles. That's five. You feeling strong, Jack? This is the easy yeah, part. <laughs> Adam, put that bloody camera down and start working. You'll thank me for this. I, know, I, I haven't done any work all day. <laughs> no, he's all right. He's all right. Cool. You got the camera to work. You're making a video of it? I don't know. I don't know. We have some in the car. All right. 45 litres of water, 45 gallons of water in the car. Oi, oi. Uh, now we're looking at... Now we've got lasagna in a tin. <laughs> Classic. Who's that geezer? Eddie Abdo. See this? <laughs> Shit. Wake the fuck up. Wake the fuck up. <laughs> but we're going to eat Eddie Abdo. <laughs> right. Spaghetti meatballs, lasagna, and beefaroni actually had good calories, didn't it? Yeah, beefaroni. All right, so what we've got here is one day is three cans each, three meals. So that's one day. That's another day. This is cheap, full of rubbish, but very high cal. Yeah. 410. Not recommended for your normal daily consumption. Oh God, Everything, yeah. everything is red. Yeah, do, literally do as we say, <laughs> not as we do. Our internal systems <laughs> are gonna be red, so it Everything we've said for years, the advice, <laughs> fitness, training, nutrition, just forget it for yeah. the next 10 days. Exactly, it's all about calories. So while Jack is sorting the third day of tinned rations. I'm gonna look at some tuna now to supplement it. And the tuna in water is less cows, but it is cheaper. So I reckon we go uh, pick up some of these. Right, so we've got tuna in oil because it's double the calories of tuna in water. And how many of them do we need? We need, what, one per day? Yeah. Per man? Yeah, yeah. Put the coffee in. Da -da 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 -da. We're talking about coffee. Right, so let's update you. <laughs> <laughs> we've got tortillas, a couple of Gatorades each. Tupperwares for eating out of, and pineapple chunks for a bit of sugar, and then that's spam in there as well, because Jack, well, what did you say, Brucey? No British expedition would be complete without some spam. That's not spam. certainly wouldn't be. Okay, snacks. Uh, take it easy, guys. See you later. Bye. That's the finished article, so we're going a couple of bananas each for just a couple of days, and some fruity stuff, some sugary stuff. That's pretty much it, right? Some apples, some peanuts. And then Jack has sourced from England, or from America technically, yeah. uh, three days worth of wet rations, so like astronaut No, food, not, not wet food. rations, so rations. freeze-dried rations. Yeah. So the difference is freeze-dried, you have to add water, effectively like a pop noodle. Wet rations, you can eat cold, um, straight from the packet. Because you, you can eat both cold, but wet rations you eat straight away. Three, eight, three, seven, three. Three, seven, three, so that's $120 each a day, a uh, week, sorry. Yeah. That's not that bad. I don't think that's How you feeling, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Excited. It's a lot of food. It's a lot of food, but for a big guy, yeah. big guns, <laughs> needs a lot of scrap. Needs a lot of fuel. 101, 102, 103. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good work guys. By guys, I mean me and you. <laughs> the only bit of work he's done all day. British engineer, moving the boat. The other boat. Fist bumps all round. Yeah, fist bumps all round. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Getting some 
well earned food in there. Yeah, mate. Deserved. Well deserved, mate. Good morning and welcome to the main event. We had a lovely evening last night eating at uh, next to the local fish fry. Got some fuel in, some chicken and some ribs and some uh, Caribbean rice and peas to get us ready for the big day today. This is where we've been staying, the last, the aforementioned place over the last couple of nights. And this is the beautiful sunrise that we've had. This is the, the little room Jack and I have been sharing this little bed in this cabin. Uh, bags are packed. We're gonna have a coffee now and then we don't have to hitchhike this morning. We've made enough friends on the island now that everyone, so many people are gonna come and watch us push out, which is awesome. Really, really nice. Probably about 20 plus people we've interacted with that are keen to help and then also come and say hello this morning. We're pushing off at 9 a.m. So we're gonna have a coffee here now quickly in the main house and then be on our way. And this main house, if you've seen Fool's Gold with uh, Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson, this was uh, where a lot of the crew and McConaughey himself met the, the owner of this, uh, this accommodation as they were filming a little bit for that movie. So a little fun fact for you. All right, we're all aboard, all bags on board, feeling good. Just getting our stuff organized now. Had a lovely send off from all of our friends on the island. And it's a case of getting our faculties in order and we have half an hour until push off. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now officially left Governor's Harbor on the beautiful Eleuthera Island. And we have got our 250 nautical miles ahead of us. Brucey and I, first on the oars, we've made some decent progress. Eleuthera is almost a distant memory. Settling nicely into the rowing, and I just wanted to thank you very much for watching episode two of this incredible saga. I'm buzzing, and all the boys are buzzing. We're gonna have a fantastic few days in the sun. Just a little paddle, isn't it, Brucey? As you said. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for watching this one. I'll see you in episode three, where we're gonna pick up exactly where we left off and see how day one and day two turn out on the open oceans. And if the one thing you could do to help me and help us on this journey is to share this series with a friend. So anyone you know that loves an adventure and wants to see how we turn out, then uh, get them involved, send them the link to this video. And thank you very much for watching. See you next time.